walk. And um, so I'll give you some stats on on Tez. You see his Raz score right there. Uh, again, Raz is out of 10. So as close as you can get to 10, that's the best. He has a 9.91. Um, his 40 time was a 4.36 at, what, 6.2 if I'm not mistaken. I think Tez was one of the last ones I did. One of the last few I did yesterday. Yeah, he about six, one and a half. Uh, I think that on PFL they had him at six two, but I think he like six one and a half. And if you don't know Tez's history, Tez almost didn't play this year. Mm-hmm. He went through multiple um, uh, NCAA, um, what you call them, um, uh, not trials, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, he had to go to appeals, appeals. Yeah. Because they tried to say him going to a school counted as a transfer when the school didn't even have football that year, and basically he didn't get on the he was on the team, but he didn't get a chance to play till like week five or six. So when I when I roll off his like stats and stuff like that, you wonder why he didn't play that much because he wasn't clear to play till like week five or six. So with with Tez, uh, twenty twenty one, he was at um. Where did Colorado's coach come from? Uh, Kent State. He was at, he Kent, was at State. Kent State. Yeah. He was at Kent State. He had uh, 86 snaps. And then 2022 at Kent State, he had 775. And then I think he set out a whole year. And then he came back here in North Carolina. He only had 534 snaps. But, again, that was because he didn't play that much. So his best year was that 2020 – let me see. That 2021 year at Kent State when he had um, 95 targets, 58 catches, 921 yards. And 11 touchdowns. But again, even this year, only playing a little bit over half the year at North Carolina, 66 targets, 41 catches, 699 yards, seven touchdowns, most of which came versus North Carolina. Uh, his contested catch rate, 45.2%. And this is over his whole career. Uh, drop percentage, 8.8%. Again, that's over his whole career. And he only had 10 drops in those three years. So as far as on tape, uh, what did you see from Devontae's, a.k.a. Tez Walker, Chris? Um, you know, I saw an incredible athlete, like an incredible straight line athlete. Like you, you watch him eat up cushion, you know, cornerback, give him 10 yards and it still doesn't matter because he eats it up in a hurry. And um, by the time they they notice it and they flip their hips, he's already behind them. Mm-hmm. And you you saw that multiple times uh, on the North Carolina tape. Um, obviously, physical freak. Um, the thing that he, he does need to shore up um is definitely his hands like um when it comes to vertical targets his hands are fine but when you talk about the short and intermediate stuff Mm -hmm. that's when it can get a little shaky with hand placement and hand technique as far as catching the ball and and we saw that rear its head in on in senior bowl in the senior bowl he had one of the worst times of any wide receiver there it would just drops and then you could see it getting into his head and you know once you see that that start to seep into the brain it's pretty much over. Yeah, um, no ball but, effect. Yep. And um, him, he also, I mean, he's, you said it earlier, he's incredibly young in football years, you mm-hmm. know, and, and you see that in his film. Like, you don't see a lot of route running in his film. You don't see a lot of nuance. It's a lot of him just using his physical ability, his height, his vertical, in order to, you know, win above the rim. Okay. Now, in the NFL, it's going to be a whole different ball game. You know, you're going to have to show some nuance. You're going to have to, like, you you see the, the RAS score and you see, like, this athletic profile, but that has to be a part of the whole game, like route running, uh, breaking in and out of cuts, it, everything. It, he, he just hasn't been able to do that yet. And, you know, with some more season, and I could see him turning into a, a real steal in his draft. Mm-hmm. And what, what I got on my paper is I got a deep ball go-getter, uh, blazing speed at 6'2". Uh, he closes the cushion fast. Uh, he stacks DBs once he's on top of them. He needs to be a better intermediate route runner, and his best releases are speed releases. But mm-hmm. really, I could have just left a deep ball go get her on it because that's what he specializes at. And, and and I think he needs to be better at a lot of those intermediate things. But I recently watched um, a Brent Coleman video about Rasheed Rice, and that changed my outlook on a lot of stuff. Like last year, Rasheed Rice, I kind of dogged Rasheed Rice, you know, in my, in my, uh, what a Jose, in my assessment of him saying he could do this, could do that. But he went to a team that didn't ask him to do a bunch of stuff. Right. So when a lot of these prospects, if they go to teams that uh, accentuate their positive, 
they'll have good years. Because Rasheed Rice wasn't asked to do a, like the everything that a receiver could do, and he right. excelled. And 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 I think the the flip side to that is you look at somebody who I know you liked, I know I like Jonathan Mingo. Now, mm -hmm. if you flip Rashi Rice and Jonathan Mingo, how different is the opinion for the masses on Jonathan Mingo if Mingo's in the Kansas City offense mm -hmm. and they they just use him to his to his strengths instead of where the 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 Panthers. You know, they're lining him up on the outside, and it's it's mainly Adam Thielen doing all of the the inside work. You know, it's it that landing spot and fit is it's so pivotal for these guys and and the success that they'll have. Yeah, and and I like it's tough to say now because Rashi Rice had such a good year, but I still think coming out of the draft, I think Mingo was the better receiver. Now, it, I don't know if that still holds true now because confidence is a is a big thing, and Mingo had a crappy first year. And Rasheed Rice had a Super Bowl and a good first year. So I don't know. I can't say that Mingo's the better receiver now. But, you know, this time last year, I would still stand on and say Mingo's a, a better receiver. But that, like you said, that landing spot. And now a year versus a year of confidence for Mingo. I mean, a year of confidence for Rasheed Rice and then a year of struggle for Mingo. Who's to say, like, Mingo may not ever be anything now. Rasheed Rice may, may take off. Right. All right, second guy on our list. Let me see who's next. Who's calling me? Oh, the battery life. <laughs> Jalen 